The 20th Passion for Speed Festival is proudly brought to you by Marlborough Crane Hire, GNH Transport, and Car Care Clinic. Welcome to SWAT Corps. It's midwinter for the Passion for Speed Festival this year. No spectators allowed due to the COVID restrictions, but needless to say, still lots of action to happen out on the circuit during the two days of racing, including Ian Schofield giving us a little look at his Cosworth powered Minardi. Originally piloted by Pierluigi Martini, he got out onto the circuit and gave everybody that was at the track a little bit of a thrill, and everybody on the live stream getting a little thrill to see a Formula One around SWAT Corps again. Sights and sounds on F1 car, certainly dramatic. And unofficially, with a little bit of timing on the sideline from TJ Timing, the outright lap record so far in that car now goes to Ian Schofield. Really awesome to see him at the wheel of that car. And from Formula 1's we head into the Legends of the Nine Hour, proudly brought to you by Marlboro Crane Hire. And what a field of cars we've got. The two Detroit brothers from Trans Africa Racing will be taking it on. And uh, looking forward to a big battle there with Ben Morgan, who Sorrel van der Merwe will be in the mix as well. He'll be piloting the NGK and Pablo Clark Galaxy. Ollie Broom in there as well. Look out for Jeff Kruger in the Camille Doering Motorsport Ford Comet. And also take a big look at Sia Faree Jr. in the second of the Galaxies. We're on board with van der Merwe as we head down towards Turn 1. Detroit, Detroit, 1 and 2 heading into Turn 1 and into Turn 1. Looks like a bit of a battle in the background as well with the under 2 litre class. Great to see some manoeuvres up there, right from the word go from Mark Miller, but he's got Paige Lindenberg right on his tail. And look at this battle heading in there. The two big blocks of flats making their way out of turn two. The Galaxy's on the tail there of the Mercury and looking for an opportunity to get through there on that Chevy Nova, led out now by Jonathan Detoy. See just how hard he's having to work. This is Jeff Kruger's point of view. He's in the Mercury Comet a bit further back there. And that's how the Universal Motorsport man does it. Smooth and silky through there, but a little bit of... Oh, smooth and silky. It gets out of shape there for Sierra Jr. He's got that big galaxy lit up and it goes sliding into the barrier. Look at that tag in the barrier and bashing it to the side. Not to scratch on the car, though. He just came out of turn three, got the back end, stepped out, tried to catch it. It just went sliding along the dry grass and bang, into the wall. As I said, not a scratch on the car, though. A little bit of damage to the wall. Speaking of damage, big damage being done now by Ben Morganroot and by Jeff Kruger as they start to make their way to the front end of this field. They're slowly but surely closing in on the two Detroit boys. Looks like Mark Detroit is going to have a bit of an action. Let's catch up now with Sorrel van der down in pit lane with Rob Portman. It cannot be a passion for speed festival here at Swatkoff's Raceway without chatting to the legendary Sorrel van der Supervan, you've got your Pablo Clark car here. You're all suited up. Always excited to go out and, and drive around Swatkoff's. It's always an idea, you know, because this track is the most, you know, most competitive track in the country. Everything works. There's a hell of an entry today and it's always nice. And it's nice to see racing cars on the track again for a change. I was going to say, it's, it really is awesome to see in these tough times, so many cars, so many races, so many sponsors coming out, still putting their money behind South African motorsport. And SWAT Corp's Passion of Speed, always just a brilliant place to come. Yes, yeah, so like I said, this is the only track that really works in the country. We've got a fantastic following here. It's always nice to be here. You know? so I've been on all the different spot, spot corp raceways and uh, Peter Dutour has really done it out of his job by keeping this thing going so well, so long and doing it so well. Well, thank you, Sol, for the Wish you the best of luck. Are we going to be seeing the old girl go out do a couple of laps? Um, yeah, we are racing at the 12 o'clock and 5 o'clock, I think. I qualify third, so it's, uh, I'll be busy for a while. Trying to get in front, but uh, looking forward to it, yeah. Always looking forward to seeing Sorrow from Amerva out there, but look at the battle that's happening in under two litres as well. Coral Pinar slowly but surely closing in on Mark Miller, the Cortina versus the Alpha up front. Third place battle starting to heat up as well with Paige Lindenberg debuting a brand new car there for the Road to Race team. And looking pretty tasty behind the wheel of that one as well. Not too far off the back end of this front little fight for uh, under two litres. And the SV Tech machine is slowly but surely closing in on Mark Miller. Oh, looks like uh, gearbox issues here for Jeff Kruger. You can see him just uh, with a box full of nothing there and rolling across down on towards turn number eight, GNH Transport Corner and actually into pit lane. So the Mercury Comet unfortunately out of this one. You can see a bit of a recovery coming there from Sifri Jr. He's got ahead of Paige Lindenberg. She's hanging on and in with a fight of her own there. And you can see just how hard she's having to work to keep out Rian Lubber in the BMW. Ben Morganut has certainly got his uh, intentions firmly set on Mark Detoy and on Jonathan. He's got through on Mark. He's finding a way up to the front end with only a couple of corners to go. The chicken flag is coming out on this one and it looks like Ben Morganut is going to just miss out. I mean, he needed about two more laps to probably go for a run for the, front, for the front end of the field. But you can see just how tight it was between those two. Chicken flag comes out and it is Jonathan Detoy to take the first victory there. 
Ahead of Ben Morgenroot and Mark Tatoy for ZA, ZB went to Oli Broom beating out Paige Lindenberg and the under two litres was Mark Miller, Carl Pino and Rion Liver. Let's catch up now with Jonathan Tatoy after race one. Famous Tatoy name here at Spot Cops Raceway. Driving these old classics, I can see you exhausted. That must be a handful. Yeah, look, you can hear me panting, it is. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, uh, what, a, what a race. I mean, we, we had pole, which is fantastic. Had a good start. Saw my brother was behind and then uh, Sorrel behind that. And I knew Sorrel was probably going to hold the guys up a little bit. So I put my head down because I knew uh, Jeff and Ben were going to be quicker than me. Um, but yeah, so just put my head down and kept going and then I saw Ben got past Mark and he was hunting me down. I'm, I'm glad it was an 8 lap race, not a 10, because I think he would have got me if it was 10. Yeah, I think I have to agree with you there, Jonathan Detroit. Two more laps, Ben Morgan could possibly have been in the mix there and giving you a run for your money. But I think that might be the case now in race number two. Morgan Root alongside Jonathan Detroit for the race start. Jeff Kruger and Seferi Jr. looking to come through and make up for lost ground after a bit of a dismal start there to the first part of the day's proceedings. But the lights are about to go out here and it looks like we're going to be in for another epic battle in the Legends of the Nine Hour. As they head down into turn one, good start there coming out of Oli Broom just ahead of Paige Lindenberg. Lindenberg going on the inside of Coral Pinar looking for a chance to just squeeze up in between those under two litre classes with the ZB category. But you can see Jonathan Detoy hangs on to the whole shot, forces Ben Morganwood wide through turn two. Ooh, Detoy sideways, getting it absolutely lit up through there with a little bit of cold tyres. That's not what you want to be doing, but that's exactly what these big legends of the nine hour cars do. They slip and slide and they start to really get into each other's mix as they get into the thick of it when we get into a race just like this. Here comes a big move from Detoy. Sorrow Van Amover trying to outbreak him into turn four, but Mark Detoy squeezes him out. Van Amover dives in behind Detoy now and heads up towards the top of the hill following on the back end of that incredible Ford in front of him. And I'll tell you something, Sorrow Van Amover's got his work cut out for him because he's got Jeff Kruger and looks like a hard-charging Sierra Ferri as well. Junior wants a way past and he wants to get up into this mix. He wants to make up for that lost ground after sliding out and damaging some Armco barriers in the first one. Oh, Jeff Kruger getting forced into the dirt there as well from Van. Supervan is definitely having a great time of it so far in the Pablo Clark and NGK Galaxy as they come down. Oh, Mark Detoy with a hand up. That's a bit of a pity. Losing Mark Detoy so early on. Well, he's not lost, but he just pulls the sideline with a bit of an issue. Maybe it's a gearbox problem. And a change up there between Jeff Kruger and so Supervan. Here comes Jeff Kruger looking in the rearview mirror. But I was about to say, here comes Sierra Seferi Jr. looking for a chance to squeeze through there. So Kruger versus Seferi Jr. versus Supervan. Kind of seen that on a few occasions, but this time it's Seferi Jr. at the wheel of that incredible galaxy from Trans Africa Racing. Jeff turns in, absolutely smooth and steady, but Seferi Jr. is slowly but surely starting to make a move onto the front, and he's actually got through on Van. So Frau van Amerva drops back to the back of ZA, and uh, now has to follow through on the leading galaxy. Chevy Nova out front ahead of the Mustang, and then pushing hard is the Mercury Comet of Jeff Kruger. Has he got enough time to close in on those top two? A little bit of a gap opened up here between the two galaxies. As uh, you can see, Mark Detoy eventually pulling to the sideline. I was about to say, uh, CFRE starting to pull slightly away there from Sarah van Amerva. Van Amerva now going to be into the clutches of Ollie Broom in the East Coast Classics uh, Mustang. And looking for an opportunity now to be at the front end of this one. You can see just how hard they are having to push. As they come down into the closing stages of this one, Mark Miller's car also under a bit of threat there from Paige Lindenberg. It looks like Rian Lover hasn't been able to run with the Ford just ahead of him as he did in the first heat. So the BMW just dropping back ever so slightly. Not dropping back is Ben Rowan or Jeff Kruger. They're closing in on Jonathan Detroit now. Jonathan Detroit under big threat heading into the closing stages. You can see just how hard and determined Ben Morgan is driving. They have got absolutely nothing in it between them. And Jeff Kruger wants by as well. Remember, he had a little bit of a gearbox issue in the first one. Got it all sorted out now. And it looks like the SV Tech boys have got it definitely sorted here for the second heat. He's going to have a go yet, Ben Morgan Morgan shuts the door. He has to go the long way around turn two, which is not the easiest thing to do in these big cars. Morgan putting a wheel on the dirt, and oh, a little bit of a touch, and I think a bit of a bump there between the two bumpers. The East, <laughs> the East Tennessee Motor Company Ford Mercury onto the back end there of Ranfantine's Finest. As they come up into the back straight, you can see Jonathan Detroit going defensive almost instantaneously. He gets onto that back straight, realizing the two Fords are coming, and they mean business. Morgan Root is in the thick of it here big time and he's loving this, fighting it out here with Jonathan Detroit. He's done that on numerous occasions. He's done it with uh, Jeff Kruger on numerous occasions as well. This time he goes onto the high side. Jonathan Detroit is late on the brakes in the Chevy Nova and that Chevy is just keeping these two forwards at bay. But how much longer can Ben Morgan Root fend off Jeff Kruger's attack? He has a big look on the inside. Can't quite get there. Absolutely nothing in between these guys. Remember, there's two corners to go as they come to the checkered flag. And who's going to have what it takes on the brakes into the final corner? That's what it's going to be. As they come down towards GNH Transport Corner, Morgan Root goes on the inside, has a look, but he's not close enough, and the door is firmly shut there by Jonathan Detroit. He's going to take a double victory. Morgan Root right on his tail this time, 
And right behind that, it's Jeff Kruger. So he was very lucky to fend off the intentions there of Morgan Root and Kruger. But a good win for Jonathan DeToy. ZB went to Oliver Broom one more time ahead of Paige Lindenberg. And under two litres went to Carl Pinar ahead of Miller. Siafri, you've just come off track. And the first thing I asked you was, was that hard work? And you said, yeah, that was. Yeah, look, uh, those cars are heavy. <laughs> they hard work by itself. So, yeah, now nah, nah, the, the old guys felt in 1960s and <laughs> 70s. So, yeah, I take my hat off to them, the way they raced in those years. But, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Welcome back to the 20th running of the Passion for Speed Festival here at Swatkops, the arena of motorsport just west of Pretoria. And it was one of the biggest fields we've ever seen in South African motorsport at the Passion for Speed Festival. And joining in was the Bridgestone BMW Car Club Racing Series with a nice big field as well. About to go to battle at the front end and expected at the front end was a big one between Andreas Mayer and Adrian Dalton. Adrian Dalton got the drop, but Andreas Mayer seemed to have a bit of issues right from the word go, dropping right to the back of the field on the warm-up lap and had to try and find a way through early on. Great to see the Pablo Clark entry there of Jackie Schechter in the Batmobile. And GNH Transport also giving an opportunity to the ex-CEO of BMW South Africa for a chance to have a drive there with Uli Sani. Once the extra shoes BMW hit the front, there was no catching Adrian Dalton, and he went on for a double victory on the day to take the victory in the BMW Car Club Racing Series. Let's move now onto the GNH Transport Extreme Supercars. Big fight expected between Lamborghini, McLaren and the Porsches at the front end. And look out for a couple of Ferraris thrown into the mix as well. The GNH boys are certainly fired up. Ricky and Gianni definitely got some uh, serious business to sort out here on the circuit with some new livery on their cars. And looking forward to a big battle at the front end there in the GT3 class with Greg Parton and Mark Toy. Lights went out and we were racing an absolutely brilliant start coming out of the BMW of Palo Rio. He goes side by side with Charles Lorenzi as they go down towards turn two. And eventually just tucks in. Oh, and a big spinner right in the front of an a big field of GNA Transport Extreme Supercars. Exo getting it completely out of shape there. Zolila Clarke just got it completely wrong with cold tyres coming out of turn one and lit the backup of that McLaren and went spinning. Very lucky to be avoided by every other car on track. I don't know how he got missed there, but he certainly was uh, definitely had luck on his side. You can see Gianni Giannacaro diving to go around his inside. He eventually had to tuck in, and so did Greg Parton. They lost out a little bit of ground there, but eventually Giannacaro just squeezing through to get to the front end of the GT3s. Badnik now pushing hard for third place in the A-plus category, and Mark Dettori right on his tail, leading out the GT3s with Gianni and Ricky Giannacaro coming along in their Lamborghini Trofeos. Those two Lamborghinis are going to be hard-pressed to come and catch that Ferrari out front. Look at the battle at the front end, though. Paolo Loro has found something special in that BMW, and the combined racing machine is now putting the pressure all over the back of the Stradale into Africa mining Lamborghini of Charles Arrangis. It's across the line. Is that the red lights on? Possibly the red lights are on. I'm not quite sure why, as they went down into turn one. You can see uh, still a battle here between the GT3s, and yes, Charles Arrangis has slowed up. He slowed up dramatically. I think he probably saw the red lights and thought the red lights were on for a red flag situation. He slowed up pretty dramatically and still slowing and now realizes, hang on a second, maybe it isn't a red flag situation. And he powers the uh, Motorsport Lamborghini back into full gear. It's allowed Budnick through and it's allowed Paolo Leroux to take the lead. Look at the lead he's pulled. Absolutely brilliant stuff. He didn't hold back. Look at the big flames coming out of that V10 as it goes into the brakes into turn four. That bucketless racing machine absolutely flying in the moment, but he has to because he's got big threat coming from behind in the form of Arangis. The range is going to be later on the brakes. He can go extremely late on the brakes with that aerodynamic package on that Lamborghini of his. And he eventually slides through into second place. Now starts to look to make up the ground that he lost having looked at those red lights across the line, thinking there was a red flag situation. But here we go, back into full race mode. And he's now looking to close down on that BMW and bring Budnick along for the ride. Big flame out of the side of that car again. Looks like a change up in the, second, in the uh, fourth place overall. But the lead of GT3 is for Gianni Giannacaro just in the background. And he's got head. Yes, in fact, uh, look at that. Mark Detroit's dropped back dramatically. All three Lamborghinis have got through on him. Parton has now moved up into third place ahead of Detroit. And it's Ricky Giannacaro in second place. So Giannacaro is one and two on track for the GT3 class. Parton there in third with Detroit down in fourth. Not quite sure why Detroit's dropped back so dramatically, but he's down in fourth place now in the Ferrari. Looking to close in on the two Trofeos and on that Hurricane. And the drives an environmental man who's having an absolute blast out there at this point in time. I can tell you something, he's going to have his sights firmly set on Ricky Giannacaro, possibly even on Gianni. There's enough lap time still and life laps in hand here to catch both of those cars ahead. And looking for a chance now to get to the front end of the GT3's will be Parton. Speaking of getting to the front, oh, hello! A little bit of rubbing's racing there. Leroux going at it and a bit of banging between the BMW and the Lamborghini as they're going to GNH Transport Corner. Nothing wrong, that's the way to keep the sponsors happy. Make sure you give all the action in their corner. And that's exactly what Leroux is doing here with uh, Arangis. Arangis is going to try and drive around the outside. 
This is a difficult maneuver to pull, but of course you can do that when you've got an aerodynamic package that is available on that GT3. And there he goes. Absolutely brilliant stuff. The A-plus class now led out by Arunji's. They come down now in a bit of back markers. That's going to try and help things out here for Parton's point of view. He's managed to close the gap down a little bit on Ricky Jonakara. And Ricky Jonakara is going to try and use the traffic to his advantage. He's coming up on a couple of the uh, back markers there. You can see. And look at that. There you go. Diving through is Johnny Jonakara. Here comes Ricky. He's going to be blocked slightly. No, he's not. Diving through and getting ahead of that M235i. Avi and Cottle, but he's still got to get through there on Stefan Schneider's. The leaders have got through. Checkered flag is about to come out. Arangis has opened up a pretty decent lead, considering the fact that he was fighting so hard initially with Paolo Loro. Loro's going to still come through for second place and Budnick for third in the A-plus category. Gianni Jonakora takes it from Parton and Ricky Jonakora. Mark de Toy there in fourth ahead of Blunden, who takes Bs. Jackson takes the Cs and Letlaka takes the As. Let's catch up now with Charles Arangis. Charles Arangis, you always make it look so easy to take a supercar around Smart Cops here. Uh, looked very entertaining, that race number one. Yeah, no, I must say, it's... Uh, <laughs> It's, it's a bit frustrating right now. I mean, um, there was a red flag, then there wasn't a red flag. Everyone came past me, so I had to start racing again, you know. And the idea was to keep our noses clean. We've, we've got the superior car. You know, this weekend is all just to get data for, for our next GT3 race. So, you know, it wasn't really to, to race, you know, or, or, to, or to have a, a tussle with, uh, with Paolo. So, yeah, I mean, he made it very difficult to get past him, which, which is totally within his right. It's unfortunate, but, um, you know, it's racing. You don't get much finer than the GNH Transport racing that we're seeing today, that is for sure. They're putting on a fantastic show here for all of the people that have been watching us on the live stream and here live on our TV coverage as well. Great to see it as we get ready to go now for race number two. Will the row be able to do anything about that all-conquering Sudale into Africa mining Lamborghini? They are side by side. A bit of a gap there. Ben Morgan, who's just being held up ever so slightly, you can see. And not going to be up close and personal with the first three cars on the track and most first five cars there as well. So it looks like a bit of work to be done there by Ben Morgan, who as he closes things down, trying to in his Lexus. Lights go out and we go racing again. And once again, it is Arangis who takes the whole shot around the outside. The cut for Jonathan Detoy stepping up into the Pablo Clark Racing Ferrari this time out. He'll be piloting uh, the only Ferrari out on track at this point in time. His brother not making it out for the second heat. But you can see the battle is going to resume yet again. And look at that already. Greg Parton looking for a way through there on Budnick. Trying to put the pressure onto the man there in the Lamborghini Hurricane. And uh, looking for a chance to squeeze through out in the big uh, Dodge Viper. That Dodge Viper, absolutely brilliant. Lovely to see it down the back straight over with those huge flames up the side. Morgan Roots right there as well with them. And Ben Morgan Roots certainly means business. He's running, of course, in Class A. Looking for his first victory in Class A. He missed out on the first heat. He had some issues. And uh, Zolila Letlaka, despite spinning out, still took the win in Class A in 10th overall. He comes up alongside. Here's Morgan Newton Parton. Oh, Parton just opening up the door there. And Ben Morgan says, thank you very much. I'll take that any day of the week. But remember, he is a slightly different category and slightly different classes that they're fighting for in their own rights. And what Parton will be lo looking for is the rearview mirror to try and keep out Gianni Giannacara and Jonathan Detoy. Pablo Clark racing Ferrari looking absolutely brilliant at this point in time. Pretty it wasn't out for the first one, but it's certainly out for the second one as they look up into turn one. Oh, a big look there from Jonathan Detoy. Try and get on the inside and find a way past on Gianni Giannacaro. He's in BISC colors now. New livery on that car, as I said, and his brother also running some new livery. Looking forward to the new livery that comes at the next round of this championship. You can see just how difficult it's going to be for him as he's got a big charge coming from Detoy. Just behind that, because look out for the KTM crossbow of Dion Duplessis fighting hard for honors in... Class D, he's fighting with uh, Uli Sani and uh, with Cotwell. And the battle continues here between uh, Ben Morganut and now he's closed up onto the back end. So it's V8 versus V10. Let's see what's going to have what it takes here between these two cars. The Lexus taking on that incredible all-conquering Dodge Viper. At one stage, that was the car to have in this category. And it definitely was uh, the most potent machine we'd seen in extreme supercars in a long, long time. But of course, now with the introduction of a whole bunch of Lamborghinis, Ferraris and Porsches, making it even more difficult for guys to get to the front end and take the overall victories. That's what Jonathan Detoy is trying to do here in the GT3 class. Looking for a chance for a win here. He's got to get through on Gianni Giannacari. has another look into turn one. Giannacari matches him and just shuts the door, keeping him out. Ricky Giannacari just in the background. He's fighting him hard there and fighting hard with Ant Blunden. Ant Blunden in a Class B Porsche and pushing hard to try and get to the front end and take on Ricky Giannacari. This would even spoil his day a little bit more. Giannacari just battling a little bit here and down in fourth place. Oh, there's the second Porsche. Schneider's out of shape. Looks like he's got a bit of damage on the right-hand side. Big flame out of the car as well. He tries to fire it back up. I think he may have come together there, possibly with Marius Jackson in the Mega Fiber Audi. And uh, it's damaged the front right, that's for sure. We'll be able to get going again. We may have an opportunity. At, oh, there you go. Around the outside goes the M4 BMW of Jimbo Giannacari. First time we've seen him in that new car. 
Stroud just gets going again, but I don't think he realizes that front right wheel is damaged. He's probably going to get a black flag and uh, just warned about the fact that his car is damaged, or he'll probably feel it by the time he turns into turn two. The first right-hander. Come up and uh, go firing past Uli Sana. Uli Sana, of course, also fighting not only here in the GNH Transport Extreme Supercars, but also in the BMW Car Club Racing Series. And the win once again to Charles Arrange is a comfortable margin. Look at the battle, though, coming right into the closing stages. Ricky Giannacaro has closed down on Greg Parton. Parton's going to take the win just ahead of Gigi, and then on his tail, Jonathan Dettori, as he has been all race long. Confirmation of the results there. It is Arangis from Loreo and Budnick in A+. Ben Morgan, who takes the Class A's. Parton takes GT3. Bees goes to Blunden, and Duplessis taking the C's. R Ricky, you looked particularly happy with that second race. I'll tell you something, that was one of the best races I've had in a long time. Um, I came over the line with, I think, on the second lap, and my steering actually came off. Oh, I absolutely me. bricked it. <laughs> uh, I don't know how I managed to get it back on, but um, during the, from race one to race two, We've brought Leroy Poulter to come and help us set up the cars with Segan Govender and the guys have worked magic. That car was on rails. I cannot tell you I had such an amazing race. I haven't had that much fun in a race car in a long, long time. And uh, oh. well, that's what the passion of speed is all about. Gianni also looked like you were just loving life out there. Um, to be honest with you, I was sandwiched between a 430 <laughs> and a Huracan for 15 laps. You know, what could, what could be better, you know? Um, Greg drove a good race, kept it nice, kept it tidy, kept it clean. John had the same thing, he didn't make stupid moves with him. You know, he kept it nice and tidy, put it that way. And Greg as well, uh, big up to them. I've uh, got to say a big thank you to Leroy and Segan. The work on my car has been phenomenal. We are happy, we're back. Our cars have never been better. And, you know, it's, it's been a labor of love recently and it, it's worked off for us. So. Welcome back to action from the 20th Passion for Speed Festival here at SWAT Cops. And uh, if you look right, you're going to see the uh, Metropolitan Police Department checking that we're sticking with the COVID rules, which is exactly what happened. And it was great to have Suzuki Alberton on board, sponsoring the Lotus Challenge. In the first race, Jeff Kruger had some problems right from the word go, literally pulling out of pit lane. He broke the side shaft and couldn't even set a lap time to get him into the mix. He had to start right from the back of the field. You can see how he came through, ticking them off one by one to try and get to the front end battle. And once he got there, it was going to be Moto 3-esque. As he went at it with the usual protagonists that were in the battle at the front end of race one as well. And they were going at it four by four to the top of the hill. It was brilliant stuff. And as you can see, Jeff Kruger eventually got to the front, forcing Mackie Adlam wide. Andre Himon giving a little bit of issues there to his teammate from uh, the Adlam Auto Racing Stable. Great battles further through the pack as well in Class L. It was Ben Knights taking on Wes Maxwell, but eventually a great return and hero to zero basically, or zero to hero there for uh, Jeff Kruger taking the second victory ahead of Mackie Adlam. The Lamar Sports and GT category was also going to prove to be an incredible day's racing. Great to see such a big field of cars making their way out now for what is going to be the epitome of the day with the Castrol TT. Big field and James Temple looking to take on Josh Dovey, the two Detroit brothers. Mark Miller and Peter Bailey will be sharing a car. They'll be looking forward to pushing through as quickly as possible in that. And look out as well for a couple of little giant killers in there too. Alan Garrow out there in his AC Cobra. Dirk Venter in the second of the Road to Race and Shelby South Africa entries. And then again, expect a big battle as well as we see Miller and Peter Bailey behind the wheel of the Trans Africa Racing Shelby Daytona. Bailey giving a little bit of extra word there to Mark just before he gets out on track. It's a rolling start. It's the Detroit boys who are on the front in their GT40 and alongside them, James Temple. He'll be doing the duties all on his own. As soon as the lights go out, we go racing. And that's exactly what happens down into turn one. And it's the toy around the outside to get the whole shot. Great start coming in the mid-pack as well. Look out for uh, Robin Creel and John Kruger sharing the number 17. That's a little B8 Chevron as they go down into turn number two. Detroit hangs on. On the outside is Temple. Behind them, you can see a good start coming out of the sixth car of Oliver DeLay and Keegan Campos, who will be sharing that car. It's DeLay at the wheel at the moment. Campos will be waiting in the sidelines to jump into that car, but later on in the race. Good start from Tender Charte as well in the AC Cobra Coupe. He's now moved up into about sixth place, just behind Josh Dovey, who pushes hard through there in the little Janetta. That's a little giant killer. Definitely a car to watch out for. Speaking of giant killers, we've got Kubis and Willem Britz will be sharing their Porsche 911 RSR. And look in the background also for uh, Johanna Brain will be pushing hard in the Odecure Porsche as well. Great start from these guys. Absolutely brilliant stuff. And the 45 minute it's always been uh, the one that everybody wants to win at the Passion for Speed festivals in the past. And on the 20th uh, anniversary edition, it's certainly one that everybody wants. 
pity we don't have all the international competitors here, but they'll be watching this and thinking to themselves, this could have been absolutely brilliant with another 20 or 30 cars thrown into the mix. Here we go. Good move there from uh, Debrain, diving through and getting ahead now of Mark Miller. Or does he? Side by side, the little Porsche with that Daytona. But the Daytona should have a little bit extra power on the straight and does. It just keeps the brain out for now. Garrow on his tail as they go into turn one. So it looks like Miller's going to have a bit of work cut out for him. And speaking of work cut out, this is a big move here from Oliver Delay. Early on as well, coming out of Oli Delay. The Marlboro Craner man looking for a way to squeeze through there on the Trans Africa Racing Boys. And Detroit just keeps him honest, but only just. So we've got GT40s 1 and 2 as they head down towards turn 4. On their tail comes the Daytona Coupe there of uh, James Temple out of Road to Race and Lindenburg Racing. That Shelby SA machine absolutely resplendent as heads up to the top of the hill behind the two GT40s. And Josh Doby right there too. Warren Lombard just slowly but surely starting to get to the back of that pack. Didn't quite mention him at the start, but he's uh, taken a little longer than what we expected for him to get there. Remember, that's a man who led this race only two seasons ago as uh, we got into the COVID scenario. Just before that, Warren Lombard had an opportunity of winning the, the race and unfortunately lost out in the closing stages. But we've got to change up for the lead. Now you got Delay eventually to the front and Detroy down into second. Dovey diving on the inside of Temple. Has a big look in the Janetta, but doesn't quite get there. Janetta's got great handling, but it probably doesn't have the straight line speed of the slightly bigger V8s. And as they come down towards turn one, there's a big move there from Lombard to dive through on Dovey. And you've got Tender Chate on his own at this point in time. Right behind him, though, is Miller and uh, Bailey. Miller at the wheel at the moment. Dovey diving into turn two. Once again, putting the pressure onto James Temple. And Temple is going to have his work cut out for him. Very similar maneuvering coming out of those two and great lines out of those two as well. Here we go on board. This is Jonathan Detoy's point of view as he heads onto the back straightaway. Remember, Jonathan and Mark Detoy have won this race on numerous occasions and are looking to do it again here, particularly at the 20th anniversary edition. There's no doubt about that. It's definitely one you want to have on your CV. Having won the South African TT on a few occasions, the 20th anniversary one would be a special one to have, particularly down at Trans Africa Racing. Looks like Delay has gone to second place. He's dropped back behind a toy again. And it's uh, Temple starting to move ahead now of Dovey. Dovey has not been able to uh, get ahead of James Temple. And neither has Warren Lombard on Dovey. So everything trying to settle down here. Probably waiting for a possibility, which is highly unlikely today with a slightly smaller field. And a lot of the times in the South African TTs in the past, the guys have all waited for potential safety cars before they went in for their uh, elected uh, pit stops. You can see there's a bit of a maneuver. Chad Tendershate going at it with his uh, stable mates. <laughs> the two of them getting sideways. Kind of the, the opposite colors there with the stripes as the Cobra gets through eventually on Mark Miller. So Chad Tendershate is not holding back. He wants to close down on the second Cobra just up the road there. And you can see he's got his eyes firmly set and probably his target firmly set on Warren Lombard. Alan Garrow having a fantastic run of it. Down in Class C, leading Class C at the moment, ahead of Jerk Fenta and of uh, the two Brits boys in the Porsche. And Rob's down in pit lane to catch up now with Kiara Temple. So we're live down in the pits here with Kiara Temple. Your man's getting the job done out on track at the moment. What is your role in all of this? Uh, I'm just here to look after the team, uh, make sure that they stick to the three-minute compulsory pit stop uh, from entry to exit. Uh, yeah, for now, because they old cars, um, old mechanical machinery, we're just making sure that they last the full 45 minutes. James looks like he's doing well. We're going to bring him in uh, in the next few minutes. And Dirk's been and had his stop all looking good. Driver change now for the second GT40. Keegan Campos climbing into the wheel there and taking over from Oliver Delay. He'll be looking forward to possibly taking a victory like his dad did a couple of seasons ago. And uh, he, of course, would uh, love to share the honours of having his name up on that TT board. Tender shot, they spun out. But let's catch up quickly with Oliver Delay. Oli, quick chat with us. Your first pit stop. How is track conditions out there? Oh, track conditions are good. Uh, towards the end, uh, I got a fatigue, a bit tired, getting a bit hot, and uh, I'm trying to, I'm losing time coming through the last turn, uh, I'm trying to shift through third, and with the heavy braking there, well, I just spun off, as you saw, and I normally hook second there, so, but uh, I literally just come out of the corner, got to hook third, and I lose time there, so I was trying to catch up, I was having a good run against the unit GT, and uh, led the race a bit, and uh, yeah, I caught me again. <laughs> Fortunately, Chad Tendershate has got back on track. It looks like he's going to try and tick things off and get to the front as quickly as he can. He's pushing it to the limit. The front end, though, of a Class C, still all about Alan Garrow. Oh, off track. A little bit of problems there for Keegan Campos. Campos looks like he might be battling a little bit there with tyres. or Something's gone wrong in the car, but uh, certainly got a little bit out of shape coming out of Turn 4. And it looks like he's going to drop back ever so slightly. Hasn't quite got the pace now, and he certainly is battling. Let's catch up with Warren Lombard. Out on track. Hard track conditions out there. Uh, track's actually good. Cars have been... Uh 
We've got brakes uh, all the way so far, so I'm very happy. I hope we can bring it home. So Warren Lombard's in for his scheduled stop. Looks like there's a change up there in the 17 car as well. John Kruger now taking over from his daughter Robin Creel. Under a bit of pressure from Johan De Brain. De Brain starting to put in some very consistent lap times. And remember, there's also an index of performance that has to be won out today. And there's certainly going to be a little bit of a dice on between those two cars for that particular honor. Mark Detoy continues to lead at the front end though. Uh, oh, looks like there's a problem here. Detoy's got an issue. Detoy has got a problem. He's run off the circuit. Josh Dobie's going to take the lead as he goes flying through. But what has gone wrong here with the Trans Africa Racing GT40? It pulls to the sideline and right in front of the Zoc Club. No spectators there, of course, but uh, that is a massive loss to the front end of this race. And looks like the Detoys are out. Temple is in. Looks like he might have picked up a little bit of issue. And the word from pit lane is he's dropped a cylinder there. So only running on seven cylinders now in that Ford Shelby Daytona. Let's see whether or not he can nurse this home. He would be possibly in with the running, although it is Josh Dovey who leads out on track at the moment with the demise of the two Detroit boys. Lombard in again. That's not good. Warren Lombard cannot afford to come in for a second time, so there must be a bit of an issue there on the Pep Boys Racing. And uh, the AC Cup, you can see him shouting and gesticulating to the pit lane to say there's a bit of an issue on the car. Dovey leads out there. You can see on the right-hand side as we see uh, Lombard coming into pit lane, and that's going to throw his chances out completely. De Brain is eventually in as well. He's going to come in for his scheduled stop. Everybody has to come in for a scheduled stop. They don't necessarily have to refuel, but uh, some of the cars require a refuel. Some don't. Some do a driver change. Let's catch up now with Johan De Brain. Johan looks very hot and tricky out there. Ah, the track is getting hot and it's getting difficult. Tires are getting very overcooked. Brakes are overcooked. But um, it's all going well. Cars lasting. And they have to last. Only a couple more corners for James Temple, who's taken the lead now with Johan De Brain in pit lane. He's come back out on track. And he's moved down to third place behind Josh Dovey. Two corners to go and seven cylinders. And it doesn't matter about seven cylinders because he's going to make it to the line. Josh Dovey is coming. He's just in the background and probably thinking himself, if I had a couple more laps or a couple more minutes to play, I could potentially have taken on James Temple and given him a run to the line. But Temple is going to take the win. He's going to put the Shelby SA car onto that SATT winner's list. Great run there from James Temple. Josh Dovey comes through for second and third place. And the winning Class B goes to Johan De Brain. He will also be getting the index of performance. So it's Temple from Dovey and De Brain. Mark Miller and Peter Bailey in fourth place, beating out Alan Garrow, who takes Class C honours. And Rob Portman's down at Lindenburg Racing to catch up with our winner, James Temple. Now, was it because of your driving skill or was it because your beautiful wife was your timekeeper, your race coordinator, your everything? I think a bit of uh, everything, to be honest. The uh, team did an amazing job. I mean, the car was, I mean, 45 minutes in these old cars is not easy. So it's all about pacing yourself. Uh, we had our own issues. I think lucky it happened because if we had all eight cylinders, maybe I would have burnt the tires up and lost the brakes. Uh, so we ran on seven for a while. Uh, then when we came in for the pit stop, that last 12 or 13 uh, minutes that we had on eight. So I just had to conserve it and just keep my, my foot like there was an egg under it. But uh, yeah, I mean, thanks to the team, it was a, a great race. And to beat, you know, to beat some of the GT40 cars and uh, and cars that are really above our class um, is is something that I didn't expect. So yeah, it was it was great. Congratulations there to James Temple. Great to have the DOE Formula Vs. They were part and parcel of this incredible event. Two days of racing. The second day we saw the Vs going at it and a massive battle at the front end. Saw both of the leaders take each other out. Daniel Janssen tagging the back of Greg Wilson and then both sliding into the wall, leaving Klaat van der Bach to take the first victory of the weekend. And then into the second heat, the usual contenders at the front end again. The first four cars fighting hard, but mid-pack battles were expected too. Klaat van der Bach getting the, the whole shot. A couple of spinners in the background, cars being avoided. And then yet again, a big avoiding maneuver there from Brandon Hills, nearly going into the back end of Greg Wilson. Very lucky to avoid that. And speaking of avoidance, big battles in the mid-pack were starting to rage as well. Yanni Geisler getting at it. Lennon Janssen eventually found a way through and said, come on, let's get going. I think it was a lot more than that. And then a massive crash. Crash of the weekend, in fact. As we got two of the back markers tagging each other. Car going straight into the side of Yanni Geisler. And very lucky for Gert van der Bach with no safety car or red flag. He took a double victory, but join us off the break for more action. Welcome back to SWAT Corps, the Arena of Motorsport and the 20th edition of the Passion for Speed Festival here at this incredible circuit. It wouldn't be a Passion for Speed Festival without Pablo Clark Racing and they're celebrating 40 years in the industry. Great to have such an array of cars being out on display and out on track as well. We caught up with Paolo Cavalleri, the man behind Pablo Clark Racing at his favorite event. Fortunately with COVID, 
it's middle of the year, but beautiful weather. I always say to you that uh, the greatest way to start the year is knowing that we're racing at the end of January. But anyway, we're here and we wanted to come out in full force to support Peter and, uh, and this particular anniversary. This race meeting is always uh, really, really special for us. We've got uh, our Ferraris here. Uh, behind me are 250 GTM. It's a, um, it's a rebody of a short wheelbase. We've got our 360s, we've got our 430 GT3 here that won the Italian Championship in 2010. And of course our BMWs that will be racing tomorrow with the uh, BMW Club Cup Tang Series. So um, always great to be at Swart Corps and lovely to see a massive turnout of racing cars, if not unfortunately spectators. Yeah, great to have these cars on display and uh, giving our live stream audience a little bit of a Ferrari favorite. Little Giants now, proudly brought to you by Marlboro Crane Hire. Also a nice field of cars here. Big battle expected at the front end as the lights go out. Rion Lobo going to go side by side with Terence Buerta. And Terence Buerta is looking for a chance to try and squeeze out the Trans Africa Racing uh, Alfa Romeo. On the outside, 105, that is an incredible little Ford Anglia of Brian Rowlings. And he's at it right from the word go there with Andre de Kock from the Citizen Motoring. But it is Lubber who's got the whole shot. He's taken the lead ahead of Puertas, and right on his tail comes John Simpson. Simpson going to go out with Gary Stacey and look out for John Tendershate there as well. And looking for a chance now for that Ford Protea to be at the front end at the Passion for Speed Festival. Further back in the pack, Nicholas Christiofides taking on uh, John Kruger and Yako Taylor Jr. But at the front, it's a big battle between Alpha and Mini. Stacey diving on the inside, looking for a way through there on Simpson. Hasn't quite found a way through just yet. The mini markers coming in the background there as well. Is piloted by Ishmael Beloy, teammate there to Andre de Kock, and then the Ford console just behind that as well. 315 today, being piloted by John Kruger. Chad Tendershate is on his tail. It's Lubber going at it though, and Burtis is right there with him, not giving him any opportunity to get away. Good move there from Stacey, diving through up into third place. Gary Stacey moves up and just squeezes out Simpson into the clutches of John Tendershate. Tendershate uh, debuted that car only a couple of weekends ago, the Ford Protea, but it's great to see that car now in full flight at its home circuit. And a slightly different machine, that is for sure. Something completely different in that Trans-Africa Racing Stable. But he's got a bit of pressure from both Ed Buertis and Carl Brink in the minis. Terence Buertis leads out in terms of the mini battle in the broadband colours. Then it's the second uh, mini in British Racing Green. Climax colours for the third mini as they come into turn number one. Rowlings is now ahead of Andre de Kock, and Andre de Kock under pressure from Ishmael Beloy. Looks like a second battle there with uh, John Kruger starting to get into that mid-pack battle as well for the Ford console versus the Trans-Africa Racing Dart. Second pack of cars coming into turn two now, led out by Rowlings in a hard charging, but unfortunately hasn't been able to bridge the gap there in that little uh, Ford Anglia of his. But he's certainly in with a big fight there with the cock from the Citizen Motoring and Ishmael Beloy in the Mini Marcus. Now heading up to the top of the hill, still no changes for the lead. Rian Lubber just controlling things from the front end there. Absolutely brilliant stuff from him. Wurtis in second and Stacey in third, but Gary Stacey starting to close in. Look at that, the front bonnet there, a little bit loose on the Alpha. wonder if that's a concern there that Rian Lubber will have to have in the closing stages. It'll certainly be affecting him. He'll be looking under braking, particularly at the top of the hill. On the sideline though, John Kruger out. The Ford console just parked onto the inside of turn five, right opposite the AMG Driving Academy. He climbs out the car, looks like just a bit of a, an engine issue there for him. Checkered flag about to come out for race number one. And Rian Lubber's done it all right. Gary Stacey having a last look here. But not quite close enough to get through there on Terence Buertas. So it's going to be Lubber from Buertas. And Gary Stacey will come through for third place. Great driving from Little Giants. Class A, top three. Top three overall as well on track. As the checkered flag comes out, Class B is going to go to John Tendershate. He'll beat out Eddie Buertas and Brian Rowlings. And he comes across the line. And a nice debut there on the home track for the Ford, Ford Protea. As I said, beats out Carl Brink and Eddie Buertis. There is confirmation of the official results. Lover from Buertis and Stacey, ahead of John Simpson. And there was John Tendershate who beats out Carl Brink and Eddie Buertis for Class B. Heading straight into race number two now on another start here for Rion Lover as he goes at it with Buertis down into turn one. Buertis a little bit quicker off the line this time. Simpson goes with him. And around the outside comes the Cock and Rowlings uh, side by side as they were in race one. Can Andre de Cock possibly squeeze out that Anglia? and get through there in the GSM dart. Late breaking from uh, Eddie, and late breaking from Terence Buertis as well as he dives onto the back end of Rion Lubber. Much better start this time from Stacey, he's not holding back. And here comes Carl Brink. Brink on the inside of John Tendershate, trying to put that mini on the inside early on. He's gonna have to follow the uh, Ford Protea all the way through uh, as he did in race number one. There we go, three by three onto the back straight. As they head down into turn four, late breaking from Lubber will just keep him at the front end. Stacey keeps out Simpson. De Kock gets ahead of Rowlings. 
Mini Marcus now moving slightly quicker and a little bit higher up than what he was earlier on. And speaking of higher up, Chris Williams and Brian Fraser also slightly higher up there in the shoestring racing car as, he move, as they make their way up to the front end. Nice battle here between Gary Stacey and Burtis. Stacey now slightly higher up as well, up into second place. And Burtis down into third, fighting with Simpson. Very tough little fight there between the two of them and uh, no holds barred there from John Simpson as he squeezes through into third. He drops Burtis down to fourth. Burtis wasn't troubled at all in the race number one. He certainly got a lot more trouble here in race two and about to get a bit more of it with Tendershate right on his tail. Another lap completed with Lubber at the front. Stacey in second and Simpson in third. The mini of Burtis there into uh, the fourth spot. So a bit of work now to do for Terence. Tendershate ahead of Brink. Ahead of uh, the second of the Burtis boys. Climax Racing Mini. Then it's the Cock, Rowlings. And 165, Williams and Fraser just behind that. Rowlings goes flying through turn number one there in the 105E. That's why he's got 105 on the side of the door. And if you're around at that stage, uh, definitely probably your first car ever. Definitely made for the masses was the 105E. And of course, uh, even made more famous by the Harry Potter films. Nice maneuver here from the 95. Slightly higher up from Yako Taylor Sr. this time out. Onto the back end of that Mini Marcus of Ishmael Beloy. Five-way car battle here with uh, John Kruger at the front. He's made his way just ahead there, also in the 315 console. So that 315 on the door, also the model of that car. And Chad Tendershate also slightly higher up than what he was earlier on too, going at it with Fraser. Around the outside comes Ishmael Beloy. <laughs> you can see the two Trans-Africa Racing Boys. No holds barred and no team orders there between the two of them. Every man for himself out on track. It is Trans-Africa Racing's Rian Libba who leads things out with half a lap to go. I don't think Simpson is going to be able to catch him. And possibly going to have to hang on for second place with Stacey in third. So you're going to have Alpha 1-2 here. So the Alfisti, if they were here, would be happy about this. But I think uh, Rian Libba has had a great day in the saddle there in that Trans-Africa Racing Alpha Julia as he goes down there. And that uh, is really something pretty special here for uh, the celebration of the 20th anniversary of the Passion for Speed Festival. And of course, Peter de Toy's racing stable getting a victory in the Little Giants. Make that a double victory as Rian Lubber crosses the line and takes the win for the second time ahead of John Simpson and Gary Stacey. Good drive there from Stacey, much better from him. Burtis seemed to have a little bit of issues in his mini, but uh, in Class B, it was uh, John Tendershate to beat up Carl Brink and Eddie Burtis. There's confirmation of the results. Lubber, Stacey, Simpson, and then it was Tendershate from Brink and Eddie Burtis. De Kock down in seventh ahead of Rowlings, Kruger, and Chris Williams. Join us off the break for more action from the Passion for Speed Festival. Welcome back to action from the Passion for Speed Festival. Great to have the raffle car there from the Posi Drive Volkswagen Challenge. You can actually win a race car for 500 bucks. Definitely something you want to be checking out if you get to a racetrack at some time soon. It was a great weekend's racing and uh, super to have the historic single-seaters alongside the pre-80 and pre-90 Super Saloons. Trans Ams all mixed up into one big category. The Mobile One V8 supercars were in the house as well, put on a phenomenal show and a great battle at the front end with the usual contenders. Posi Drive Volkswagen Challenge was over 40 cars fighting for honors in class A, B and C were there too, along with the Midval Historics and Alpha Trofeo in the mix. And a great battle was there too. On Sunday was the pre-80 saloons, great to have them in the mix as well and putting on a phenomenal show to bring all the other categories to the light on our live stream. Car Care Clinic brought you GT1 sports and saloons and the Super Hatch category. We start with Super Hatch and a slightly bigger field than we saw at the Pakisa 200 but expected at the front a massive battle between Brett Garland and Jonathan Detoy with Andre Danhauser in the Pro Auto Rubber Opel Corsa taking on those two Hondas. Peter Sir looking to wrap things up in Class B as he has done all season long. Definitely a man to watch out for as the lights go out. And as they did go out, have a look at the highlights here from race number one. Andre Danaus are getting a phenomenal start, squeezing through there and finding a way through on Leonard Archer, who was actually on pole position in the ACD Valcom Hyundai. As they went down in towards turn number one and two, Freddie Watkins going at it with Almera Van Eck just behind the hard charging second of the pro auto rubber cars there. And that was Shane Forger who got the lead of Class C. Class A was led out initially by Andre Danhauser, but eventually the two Hondas squeezed him out and got to the front end. Forger continued the fight there with the two Polos. And you could see, as we expected, it was going to be the two Hondas fighting for the lead of Class A. Peter sat at the front of Class B, trying to control things. Wasn't going to have it all his own way. He had Leonard Archer right on his tail from Class A, but Class B's Carl Stoltz in the Victoria North Toyota was right there too, and looking for a chance to win out Class B. Class C, all about for Jay, but he was definitely being given a great run for his money, with Almera of Anek all over the back end of him, and starting to close down on the back markers of Francis Aldrich in Class B. 
Priestley having a phenomenal battle in the background, as always, was definitely a man to watch out for and could potentially have spoiled the day for these two, but they were just too far up the road. It was literally a two-way battle between Fouget and Almero Vanek. Coming out of turn two, you can see just how difficult it was going to be there for Almero. And the number one car from last year, definitely a hard car to pass with those new colours on. To the flag though, it was all about Brett Garland who hung on to take out Jonathan Detroit for the first victory of the day. Thinking about the big endurance race coming up a bit later on the day where they combine all the categories. Confirmation of those results, Garland from Detroit and Dan Howes of a Class A. Class B went to Peterson ahead of Stoltz and Ulrich. And Class C went to Shane Fouget ahead of Craig Priestley. Clarkia Clinic also brought you all the action from the Triple One Sports and Saloons and Sports and GTs. A good start coming from uh, highlights of race number one as they went down into turn one. Yet again, Adrian Dalton at the front end of the field, fighting hard, but in the mid-pack, expected some great battles, and that's exactly what we saw going into turn two. Mikael Patamba fighting hard there, and on the outside, Bob Neal in a new car. Harry Arangi's got it out of shape. The toy just avoided him. So did Andre De Lange as Arangi just shoved it into reverse gear to get out of harm's way. Great driving there from the old man, but he got it off track very quickly. Could return to uh, form and back onto racing tracks in South Africa for Charles Smallberger. He had Dalton on his tail and right on their tail was Bob Neal. Coming through the field rapidly was Louis Scholz. Not in his usual golf this time out in the Honda. But definitely going to be giving DeLange a bit of a run for his money and that was exactly what his intentions were. Further back, some great battles as well. Expected between George Smallberger and Mark Detoy. They've gone out on a few occasions in the past. And we're going at it again here at the Passion for Speed Festival. Philip Mayer fighting hard for Class A honours there with Johan Hutting and Mark Harvey. Harvey Wallbanger in the second of the Porsches. And big fights all the way through the pack. Late manoeuvre and a late mistake from DeLange sent him off track, allowing Louis Scholz to dive through there in the car care clinic Honda. And the Roofshaw man had to drop back ever so slightly. Checkered flag eventually came out for the first heat and it went to Charles Smallberger making a welcome return there for Universal Motorsport. Winning things out in the GT class ahead of Mikel Patamba and in third place Adrian Dalton. Class A went to Pete Porchita ahead of Philip Mayer. B's went to Lobotsky ahead of Dalton. That was Luke Dalton. Class C was Smith. D was Yorick Smith. E was Vermeulen. And X, Dwayne Brown. Nice concept with the combination of the Triple One Sports and Saloon Sports and GTs and Super Hatch for the very last race of the day and into the night. A 40 minute endurance race with no pit stops required and the triple one, 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 one lap times thrown out the window. Every man for himself out there, have fun. And that's exactly what they expect to do heading into turn one. Mikhail Patamba looks like he got the whole shot. Yes, he did. Mikhail Patamba leads things out into turn number one and two side by side initially with Charles Smallberger, but eventually Smallberger would have to tuck in behind the Castle Mini and Patamba racing Cooper S. As they came out of turn two, Dalton into third place, Bob Neal into fourth, with Andre de Lange all over the back of the Platinum Wheels and Dalman Mining, Civil's Honda. As they go through there, George Smallberger right up there as well, not too far off the back end of de Lange. Big fight expected here between the uh, Triple One GT cars at the front end, but also some great fights expected, as usual, between the Super Hatch category competitors. As you can see, it was Brett Garland and Detoy going at it again. And Detoy looking for a way through. Can't find it just yet, but definitely on a charge here to try and get to the front end of the Super Hatch category. Super Hatch was Garland and Detoy further back. Also Stoltz taking on Ishmael Beloit and Lobotsky for Triple One Bs as well as Super Hatch Bs. All the B-class categories starting to get into the mix. 186 at the front end as well, looking very good from the initial start. Was Johan Hatting with Philip Mayer right on his tail. And Mayer pushing it to the limit to try and close that gap down. Look how it's closed down at the front though. Smallburgers hit the front and Patamba's into second place with Dalton and Neil right there. Four cars going at it and we've had this for about four or five laps. Absolutely nothing in it between those guys at the front end. Brilliant stuff as always for Car Care Clinic. And what a concept here to go from sunset into the dark with the help of Hermoinsa and Chris Davison and his team supplying some floodlights right the way around the circuit giving us an opportunity to see all the action that was happening right in front. An absolutely brilliant action as you can see. Getting back into the battle here for Class A Super Hatch to toy with one headlight on there. You can see he's going to battle a little bit with only one headlight. Looks like Garland's got no tail lights either. <laughs> so it's going to be even more difficult for him. You have to be well aware. Look at these brake discs heating up under the braking up into turn five. Mikhail Patamba under massive pressure now from Dalton. Dalton looking for a way through. He dives on the inside. Looking to get through. Can he get through? No, he tags him. Oh, Dalton slamming into the side of Mikhail Patamba. Taking out the rear end and then forcing off the track even more. Adrian Dalton's holding no cards back there. That is for sure. He dives up the inside, trying to get through for second place and forces his way through, putting Mikhail Patamba, the junior driver, one of our youngest drivers in this field, off track and onto the dirty stuff. 
of Neil nearly able to capitalize on that and get through, but he hasn't been able to do it just yet. He comes alongside Dalton for turn one. But Tamba's back on track. He's down in fourth. Smallburger goes into the pits. Looks like for a quick splash and dash there for George. I think he might be running a bit rich, but he's back on track, as you can see, and going up the inside of Aldrich, trying to close down there on Philip Mayer. So uh, just a quick in and out there to his stable to get a little bit of extra fuel to get him to the end of 40 minutes. Maybe they didn't put enough fuel in at the start of this race. You can also see how the bright lights from behind are starting to become a big factor now. A couple of cars running additional lighting to what they would normally run on their cars, but uh, it's certainly becoming a massive factor and definitely have to keep an eye out. Oh, we've got a spinner. We've got a spinner right on the main straightaway and it uh, looks like Checkered Flag possibly going to be coming here as well into the closing stages. Everybody who has seen that car and unfortunately with those bright lights that have been provided by Hermonsa, they've seen the car that is on uh, basically the finish line. The Checkered Flag is on standby. It's come out and it looks like it's going to go to Charles Smallberger. He's taken the victory ahead of Bob Neal. Mikhail Patum is going to come through for third place, just getting through on Adrian Dalton in the closing stages. Hutting takes Class A, Lobosky B's, C's goes to Smith, Reina van Heeren takes the D's, E's for Milan, uh, Yakaru takes the X's, and uh, in the super hatch, the Toy, Stoltz, and Van Eck, your top three in each of their categories. Let's catch up now with race winner, Charles Smallberger. Yeah, it was quite something. Eh? My first ever night race, and uh, the first couple of laps, we had a massive dice for the lead. We were four cars, you know, the Mini, the Golf, and the Honda and me. And uh, it was quite intense, you know, going through the traffic and, uh, you know, just check light in your mirror, they blind you from behind. Um, quite a different experience, but uh, a lot of fun, eh? I enjoyed it, yeah, very good. Brett Garland had a phenomenal battle with Jonathan de Toy. Let's find out how it went. To be honest, this is my first night race. We've raced a little bit into the night, but not full-on night race. Um, as Shoal said, the, the lights were quite dis disorientating uh, through some of the corners, because you don't know if it's a car or the spotlights, but it worked brilliantly. Um, I believe I came second to jo John. He, 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 he drove well, um, but it was a brilliant race. Thanks a lot to all the sponsors. Great effort from Peter de Toy and his team to bring us the 20th anniversary of the Passion for Speed Festival here in the winter. Join us next year, hopefully, by the time we get to the end of January, the 21st edition. And we'll be enjoying all the action that you've seen here today and a bit more with some international competitors coming to join us. The 20th Passion for Speed Festival is proudly brought to you by Marlboro Crane Hire, GNH Transport, and Car Care Clinic. <laughs>